Hey guys, the question is, at what range do I zero my carbine? Okay, we're talking 5.56 right now. So if you're looking on the table, I have two setups. This just has an M68 aim point, red dot. And this one has what's called an LPVO, low powered variable optic one to six vortex. And it's got a 45 degree offset red dot, okay? So let's take this one first. So it's obviously going to depend on your, what you're utilizing it for, at what, what range you're going to, to zero it. But we have with these carbines, what, what's called a near zero and a far zero, okay? So you can reference, this slide, right? So if you think about the optic, the optic is mounted looking straight. If, if the optic and the barrel were perfectly parallel, you'd never hit anything because the optic line of sight never changes, but the bullet coming out of the barrel drops because of gravity immediately, right? So the barrel's gotta be elevated to be able to shoot at distance, whereas the optic's gonna look straight. Okay, now, if we look at that on the chart, the blue line is the line of sight of the optic, the red line is the line of travel of the bullet, the trajectory of the bullet, right? Now, the bullet is going to pass the line of sight of the optic twice. Here, in this, gra in this uh, graphic, it, it crosses it at 50 yards, and then it drops back down because of gravity at 200 yards. This is called your near zero, and this is called your far zero, okay? So if I zero this optic at 50 yards, it's also zeroed at 200 yards, all right? So what that means to me is, if I take this rifle, and I zero it, and I get a really good group at 50, I'll be able to engage anything out to 200 without even adjusting, okay? Now obviously, really close in, you're going to be, the, the bullet's gonna hit a little low, and maybe a little high here, but it's, it's within a couple of inches. It's within the noise of the rifle, all right? Now, that 50 and 200 is gonna adjust slightly, uh, depending on the bullet, the barrel length, the muzzle velocity, stuff like that. What I will do is I'll zero at 100, or at 50, and I'll go and engage steel at 200, and if it's a little higher, a little low, I'll adjust it so it's hitting steel perfectly at two. And then every target between my muzzle and 200 yards, I can engage without even knowing the range, all right? Now, the same process applies to this LPVO. The only difference is, depending on the reticle, okay? If the first line in the reticle, I'll draw it. This is what a typical reticle looks like, despite my horrible uh, drawing. So if this is 300 here, and this is a, a BDC, bullet drop compensated reticle, then this is 400, and this is 500, then everything out to 200 is crosshairs, okay? Now, if my reticle looks like this, which some do, and this is 400, and this is 500, and this is 600, then obviously crosshairs is everything from zero to 300 yards, okay? which means instead of being, this one would be a 50 near zero, 200 far zero. This would be a 35 yard near zero and a 300 yards far zero, okay? And that would get me my crosshairs from zero to 300 and then I elevate for anything beyond that, right? So normally when I'm engaging and I'm hitting and then I shoot at longer distance, I have to elevate the rifle to change the angle of departure of the bullet and compensate for gravity, right? We accomplish that two ways. If I dial it on the scope, I'm pushing the reticle down in the tube, which forces me to elevate the gun to get back on target, which compensates for gravity. If I'm going from here to a 500 yard shot, I obviously have to elevate the gun to the 500 yard line on my BDC reticle, which changes the angle of departure compensates for gravity and launches the bullet at a steeper angle. It's like throwing a football to somebody, right? I don't throw it straight, I throw it high in the air so it drops down to them, the exact same but a bullet, all right? So depending on your reticle, but generally if you zero at 50, you'll get an alternate zero for 200 and that will do for, for red dots. The only time you would go, the only time I personally would go to uh, 35 and 300 is if I have a, uh, 
BDC in here that starts at 400. I hope that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, so let's talk about zeroing. Let's actually do it. Um, first of all, let's talk about the scope. This is a one to six Vortex Razor HD. So one on the low end, six on the high end. It's got an illuminated reticle and it's got a, a, a BDC reticle inside it. So as we look at the scope from the rear to the front, the very back of it is the uh, reticle focus. All right, so it doesn't matter if you wear reading glasses, you can focus this reticle super crisp and clear. Now, generally, um, if a 20 year old was on this uh, optic, this would be pushed all the way in. But I know myself when I get on it, I gotta back it out a little bit to get that reticle crisp and clear. It's good to look at something neutral like the sky and get on it and have a partner uh, work with you and go better or worse, better or worse, like the optometrist does. What people do is they get on it, especially young eyes are so strong, they will focus that reticle. Instead of you focusing it manual, your eye will focus it, which leads to eye fatigue later on. So make sure it's crisp and clear as soon as you look at it. Moving forward on the optic, we have the magnification. Like I said, this is six on the high end, uh, one on the low end. You want to zero on the highest magnification you can. Um, people will zero in lower magnifications and then they'll go to take a shot at, at longer ranges and they'll have some scope shadow in there. Uh, the mounts on top, this is your elevation knob on top. Right side is windage. Left side is usually parallax. On these small scopes, it's actually a, a illuminated reticle. You can turn it on and off at different power settings. That's it for this. It's a fairly simple optic. Um, each click is 0.2 mil rads on these, okay? So we're gonna zero. I put a target at 50 yards like we talked about, and I'm gonna shoot three rounds. I'm gonna look at where it is. I'm gonna adjust the windage and elevation until I'm hitting perfectly at 50 yards. And then we're gonna run over to the other side of the range and smack some steel at longer ranges. Okay, so let's get it done. So uh, shot three groups. The first group hit about an inch low. So I came up an inch, second group, third group. So with a, with a even a 50 yards for a 5.56 five, with 55 grain, that's decent accuracy. So now I have a 50 meter zero or 50 yard zero, which corresponds to a 200 yard zero. So anything in there is point blank zero, they call it, right? And then I have my bullet drop compensator to adjust me to further ranges. So let's go shoot some steel. All right, so we got a 50 yard zero, which corresponds to 200 yards, point blank zero. So we're gonna shoot some steel. So if you look down range, on the right side there, you have a bunch of steel, they're like 130 yards. If you pan left down through that cut on the right side of the road, that the first target in the low ground is 250-ish. The one beyond that on the right side is three. The one beyond that on the left side is four, and the one all the way back is around 500 yards, okay? So these first ones, I'll just hold across here. That second one that's 250, I'll just hold across here is at the top of the target. Uh, and then I'll, I'll hold the three, four, and five line as we go on out, okay? So that's all right, let's get our oh, roll. So it's 250, so I'll hold it at the top of the target. Hit. 300. Hit. 400. Hit. 500. I'm not sure if that hit. Okay, so the uh, 
crosshairs on all these crosshairs top of the target 250 three four lined up perfectly when i shot at five i think it went low i couldn't tell so i just you know elevated my uh, hold and it hit the second time for sure so that's the beauty of a bdc reticle once you've got it dialed in it's just it, it's very simple and very uh, intuitive to, to to work through you don't have to mess up minutes of angles and mills and all that kind of stuff um all right hope that made sense thanks for watching